looking for games? Oh yeah, dude, we got games at F***o Land. The store with a name so cool, we can't even say it on TV. Come get some sweet deals. Trade in your old boring games for cool new ones. Anything's possible at f***ing F***o Land in the Voorhees Memorial Shopping Center on the other side of Caldor at the old Tats and Vape Shop. But first, a message from our sponsor. Do you want to play older retro consoles on your modern TV? Well, Retro Gaming Cables are here to help with the Rad 2X. These cables were designed by the creator of the RetroTank. These are low latency HDMI plug and play cables for connecting 16 and 32 bit retro consoles to modern flat screen TVs. They interpret the signal correctly and process it as a progressive scan that outputs at 480p, unlike other HDMI cables that make the picture interlaced and blurry. They have cables for the TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, Sony PlayStation, and the Nintendo version of the Rad 2X is compatible with every console released from Nintendo, which has the multi-AV outsocket. Go to the link in the description and use the coupon code RAD15 to get your Rad 2X today. Hey guys, guess who traded in a bunch of Wolfenstein games today? Me, these are mine, and I'm putting them in this store for sale for $750 each. So if you guys would like to come in and buy them, they'll be for sale right in our front window. So come on in and uh, pick them up. Right here we have the original Castle Wolfenstein, which was the first game ever for uh, Wolf the Wolfenstein series. It came out in 1981 and nobody ever wanted to play it or will play it no. because <laughs> what you want to play it no it, it's a pretty good game it, it started like you know kind of to start it but like it was a stealth genre you are game. so full of shit there's nazis right in before it. this you said <laughs> no 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 i said i don't i don't want to play the fucking game but a lot of people do and they especially did in 1981 i was not alive this that is true I, honestly can i see that because i think it I honestly think it's amazing that you have all these. You have the original like big box PC games. Yeah, and everything. real cool like that. No, I think it's cool, and <laughs> this game looks great. Right? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, but like it's it's interesting because you can kind of see this is a gaming franchise that has truly covered almost the entire history of video games, right? Yeah. Because this box, you know, you know, this is a PC era. This is a Commodore 64 game we have here. I think it was originally Apple II and they yeah. ported it you know? to different things. And yeah. then there's Wolfenstein games coming out this year. Yeah. You know, so, you know, but Castle Wolfenstein and, and Wolfenstein in general always played second fiddle to Doom and games like that. But it's actually, you know, a broader series that's been around for a longer period of time. Well, it started with this company called uh, Muse, but everybody knows later on it became id. Yeah. I think you know a little bit about this. Well, right? no, so Muse was made by Sil Silas uh, Warner, rest in peace. Big guy like myself. He died like in 2004, I think. And um, he pretty much made that game. And then Beyond Wolfenstein, Beyond Castle Wolfenstein, which is the sequel, um, you know, you're, Which was around the same time, like 81, 82. 82 yeah. 82? You're, oh no, it was 84? I for, yeah, it was 81, 84, I forget. But okay. you Early escape. It was like kind of like Guns of Navarro in like the movie. You escape and you're trying to like find clothing. You're trying to like sneak around the, like the Nazi castle and there's all this kind of stuff going on. I actually haven't, um, yeah, I was joking. I actually haven't played this before. Um, or the other one. I had a Commodore 64 as a kid and I, they did port it to that, but I didn't have this game. So the first one I had was Wolfenstein 3D. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry. Uh, this is, uh, I'll put it at $10 off. So now it's at $690. <laughs> Uh, this is Wolfenstein uh, 3D. It came on, I was going to show you the uh, disc there, but it came on uh, flop, floppy disks. Yeah, I, th I think it started as shareware. Is that, is that, but is that the full, full game, I'm guessing? This, I think, the, I don't know if it's all the, six yeah. chapters. It might, maybe, but it, there's there was three originally, and then there was three chapters that were like the night, the nighttime chapters or something like that. So there was like six in total. Um, but this is the one that everybody, you know, knew. This is what, the one that, you know, landed and John Romero and all those guys started work. This is what the yeah, first, the first game he did. John, like, like, um, John Carmack made the engine 
that that would run in. And he's like, we, we need a property to work on it. And John Romero was like, hey, I remember this game from back in the day, Castle Wolfen Titan, let's just use that. You know, I think when Mew Software folded, so they, they bought the rights. Which that to, like, was nothing. 10 years earlier. So this is like 92, 93. That, uh, this game was like 1981. So I guess when they were younger or teenagers or something, they played this one and they were fans of it. Came back, uh, made this, and they made an engine. I don't know what the other game was, but there was another game that uh, the company was working for to make, to do that sort of 3D perspective. And then later um, they decided, or they figured out how to do texture mapping for the first time, which is interesting. Um, so they threw that on the background of, I, I don't know the name of the other game, but there's another game. And that's sort of the origin of how they got to eventually Wolfenstein. As you said, you know, they were inspired to do that. They move on to this. And this sort of, you know, blew the doors off uh, this this idea, yeah, it, it really it really went crazy it, it, when it Doom came out. But. It wasn't the first first person shooter, clearly, but it was definitely the first like fluid one that people really wanted to play. That, yeah, it, 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 defi it defined the genre, it and it got them to make Doom after. Yes. What, what's interesting is if you look at the progression from like there, there's really like three id software iterations that bring us to almost the present day. There's Wolfenstein 3D that has some big. Uh, limitations in terms of like the ceiling height and you know yeah. vertical lines and things like that to make the technology work because i mean you got to remember this thing runs on computers that are like 30 megahertz like and you don't need a lot of power to run wolfenstein 3d and then you get doom and doom has lighting effects and it has more textures and it has enemies that are above you but you know you're still not it's not fluid 3d control and then you get to quake and quake does it all and this happens all over a period of like 10 years before we yeah. move on from um, Wolfenstein, what I do want to say about the original Wolfenstein 3D and like the original Doom, all those games, what I loved about them is when you first put them on and start playing them, it's immediately like, you know, uh, Death Incarnate or whatever. You, yeah. you pick your setting and you're immediately just playing the game. You're going, there's no interruptions from the time you start it to the time you end it, you're literally, it's all gameplay, 100%. And for me, I really like that. Um, another thing I really liked about these games were they were not trying to be realistic about it at all. I mean, they're very almost cartoony. They're video games. They're very you much just video play. games. Yeah, and, and they, um, I think, a lot of people look back at Wolfenstein 3D, and I think it's harder for people now to get into this because I will say something about this game that I that I going back and playing them again I don't really like is it's easy very easy to get lost in these games because a lot of the walls are the same like all right. the walls are blue in this area and then you go to another area and all the walls are red and then it's just like there's these mazes that go all the place and you find yourself just like trying to figure out where to go where when you move to Doom they had gotten so much more advanced with it that you're not, you know, you're just seeing blue walls everywhere or gray walls. I mean, you know? Doom's so little confusing with the map and what floors you're on. Everything's like, it is. everything's gray and brown or on fire. But in comparison to this, it's yeah. like, it's like night and day. I, I do have to say that your enjoyment of these games is largely dependent on how much you like the arcade style gameplay yeah. and knowing your way around. If you know where you're going, you're like, bam, 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 I'm killing him, I'm going here, I'm doing that, and it's just really satisfying. I mean, because Castle Wolfenstein had stealth actions, you could take people's clothing, and was kind of a precursor to like like a game like Metal Gear, and they took, and like I think they programmed that into Wolfenstein 3D, and they took it out because it slows down the gameplay. Yeah. Rather than the run and gun of Wolf of Doom, especially Wolfenstein's like almost there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and I think that we kind of had a, a lull, and that's kind of why we saw Wolfenstein. Stein go away where all of our our 3D shooters were getting slower and they're getting like like compare Battlefield or Call of Duty like a modern shooter to Doom or to Wolfenstein so much slower your characters have deliberate movement and momentum and things like that so really with the modern games which yeah. we're going to talk about you start seeing those elements being recreated because you can do those things while keeping the action moving at well, a it's useful funny pace. Is without Wolfenstein, because Wolfenstein, Return the Cats Wolfenstein, which we'll get to, and Wolfenstein 2009, the companies that made those then went to go make Call of Duty and all that stuff. Oh, and, yeah. and, college, and, and like modern warfare. And stuff. Before we get uh, too far ahead, uh, so after Wolfenstein 3D, I, I don't think a lot of people talk about Spirit Destiny. 
Um, I hadn't really uh, played it in depth. I played it as a teenager, but didn't go very far with it because I was still trying to make my way through the other one. What I found out about Wolfenstein 3D is it's not very hard. I right. put it on the absolute hardest setting and I didn't have a hard time beating it. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, look at me. But if you go and you play Doom, Doom's a lot harder yeah. than Wolfenstein yeah. is. But uh, then you move to Spear Destiny. Spear Destiny is actually, if you put it on the harder setting, it's actually pretty challenging. This one had uh, 21 floors. So it's actually, um, I actually like this better than I like Wolfenstein 3D. It's For me, it's a more rewarding experience. Also, they like, it, it, this, it, it's a prequel game, but it came out after. So it's actually, it's basically an approved version. It's a little harder. Music's a little yeah. bit better. Because um, like the whole thing is you're looking for this, the Lance of Loginus, not yeah. to not to make an Evangelion reference, but, but you know, <laughs> the thing that stabbed Jesus Christ yeah. and BJ's got to look for it. Um, which I like because, you know, that game was a little more supernatural than the first, than Wolfenstein 3D. Except that Wolfenstein 3D had the levels of, like, you know, the crazy scientist and Mecha Hitler. And they had, and, like, zombies and stuff. And the zombies, actually, but yeah. most people never played that because they just played the shareware levels and that was it. And it was just yeah. blue soldier guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I have a funny story about how I encountered Spear of Destiny. What's that? So before the internet, before... Any, any of that. I mean, there were services like Prodigy and CompuServe and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But locally here in Pennsylvania, there were bulletin board systems. Mm -hmm. And bulletin board systems were software that people ran in their houses. I still would love to do an episode on, on this show about bulletin board system games. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like Legend of the Red Dragon or, yeah. So, it, so some BBS PS? Yeah. No, that'd be great. I love to talk about them. Or Doors, as we called them back then. So I connected to this this uh, BBS called Battlestar Galactica, oh. and they had like a bunch of um, friendly BBSs that were all different Battle Stars, like BSG BBS. Yeah, like <laughs> like Battlestar Prometheus was one of them, and we connected yeah. to all of them, and they just had lists of software that you could download, and there were like Mario clones and like Wolfenstein and. King's Quest and Commander Keen and anything that you could find and you know you, you only connected like one or two people at a time right so like most people were on at night but if you connected during the day no one was there mm -hmm. so I saw Spirit of Destiny didn't know what it was didn't know it was related to Wolfenstein but it was like a big download yeah. so I'm like I'm gonna download it and that's how I got Spirit of Destiny that's cool. Which was really cool. Through piracy. Through piracy, yeah. <laughs> but the first time I ever connected to one of those BBSs, I had a 2400 baud modem, which is 2.4 kilobits. Like, think about how slow that is. It's right. mind-boggling. And the, the teenage dude on the other end was just like, really, dude? Yeah. Like, that's what you have? And I went to my parents. I'm like, I need a better modem. The guy on the... BBS was mean to me. 14 4. Speak, speaking about you know? slow, and like we've been to you know conventions and stuff, and we see yeah. these people running these games, and even too many games ha had some of these games running. Um, what I find is that I'm playing on my modern computer where I'm playing you know PS4 games and whatever. You go back and you, you you start running these games on like a more modern computer. They run so smoothly. And I remember they did not run like that back yeah. in the early 90s. And I almost feel like they, for, I feel like in a, in a nostalgic way, I guess, they run too fast like that. Like they shouldn't run like that. Because, you know, I'm moving through the corridors at a million miles per hour. It wasn't meant to be played like I mean, that. I mean, I had think. 8 mega RAM when I played Spirit of Destiny. Yeah. 8 megabytes <laughs> yeah. of RAM. Yeah. And, and, I, and that was like a good computer. And I'm playing Spirit of Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, so that's how I ended up playing it. Meg compared to like gig. Yeah, away. because gig. Yeah, so yeah. Like now I have 8,192 or yeah. 16,384. I got eight. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I guess fast forward. So 10 years, Castle Wolfenstein. Fast forward 10 years, you get Doom 3D. Fast forward another 10 years, you get Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Now this is like 2001, 2000, something like that. So this game I played, um, and I've been trying to play some of the more modern ones, but now we're only in the year 2000. Um, I love this game, and I actually have to say that this might be the best Wolfenstein game. Um, I can see why you'd say that. For, for me, at least, um, I like I haven't played through the entire thing yet, but g going back and playing through the uh, Wolfenstein 3D and Spear Destiny, even though I do love those, they are dated t enough that when I played this, I was like, this is a good mid-ground to where it's not, for me, too much you know, 
all about like plot and story. But this does have you know a plot and story, but it's still mostly focused I, heavily on the gameplay. Plus, what I'd really like to do, and I don't know if you guys would want to do it sometime, but apparently the best part of this game is the multiplayer. Dude, it's still, yeah. it's still very active. There's like, yeah. there's like Omaha Beach style levels where you have to like run up the beach and there's yeah. machine. Yeah, like 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 so, before Allied Assault. Yeah. That's, that's actually the first uh, Wolfenstein game I ever played. Because oh, wow. I was like a, like a Mac kid, and I played Doom and stuff like that at school and whatever. But I was really into Marathon. Yeah. You know, for the for Bungie Software, amazing game, and, and the sequels. And I was really into Medal of Honor for the PS1, which had all the sneaking and had all like show your papers and that. In fact, it was probably more of a like a Wolfenstein game. I mean, you know how the controls work than 3D because it had all the stealth elements in there as well. But Medal of Honor, the first one was amazing. So I was gifted that game on Christmas because I got a brand new Mac. Oh. So I played the Mac version of that, and while it has problems with frame rate and things like that, it was still a really good experience, and I enjoyed that. I look like the Doctor character and mm. stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so um, I, I think it's a good game. I definitely got more gameplay at the time out of Wolfenstein and Spare Destiny, but I think they were more innovative, and this was just kind of in a pack of similar games while it was a good one it was yeah i mean it started gray matter which you know that company went on to publish a lot of good stuff but yeah i i can see it was definitely like par for course of the time yeah like i don't think that that game holds up to like battlefield like battlefield oh, like 2 like and... yeah like that kind of thing right. like i think battlefield was more of a standout game you know the Call of Duties of the time, but I think it's a good game. This came this came out a couple years uh, after, uh, you know, 007, James Bond, and yeah. you can really see like the influence as you're as you're playing through this. It almost feels like you're playing. Oh, Bond. that game shits all over GoldenEye 007, man. Like that, this is that thing, yo, it's way better. This is like, yeah, I I would say that it's far more advanced. Yeah. Are we going to talk about the best version of uh, Wolfenstein, uh, even even better than this that I forgot, which is the uh, RPG mobile game? Um, yeah, they, they made a, a phone game. I think John Carmack actually coded the whole thing because he's like, I got a new phone from my wife and I want to play something on it. I know. We'll just put a so Wolfenstein like, game on you, it. Apparently you can't like get it now, but like I'd be interested just to try it. I probably wouldn't really care, but I just I would like to see it. But Another almost 10 years later and Wolfenstein 2009 comes out. Yeah. Okay, so that one I didn't play because I had been streaming all these Wolfenstein games and everybody said that that one sucked. So I took my chat's advice and I just didn't play it. It doesn't suck. It no, uses no. a lot of magic and like weird stuff. Like you have an amulet, you can control different things like have bullet shields and do shit with time and whatever. But it's technically the loose sequel to that to Return the so, Castle. So I have a question. So is there, is there three Wolfenstein continuities, four Wolfenstein continuities? There's the original Castle Wolfenstein. Mm -hmm. There's Wolfenstein 3D and Spear of Destiny. There's this and uh, 2009. 2009, and then there's the the new, order. the new order. The New Order technically, there's characters in those games that are in that, so technically those are prequels. But it's like soft. Right. It's very soft. And then you have something like the Old Blood, which is a prequel to New Order, but that's technically a remake, a, a remake kind of of. Return to Castle this, this series is almost very close to being able to have a chronologically confused right. about it. Om almost. Especially considering the fact that almost every one of these games also has like DLC packages. Like even the Spirit Destiny has like yeah. other like chapters and shit that you can get. I, 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 will, I will say if you only had to play three games to get the full experience, you'd play Wolfenstein 3D, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, and The New Order. And that is it. Yeah, but 2009 Wolfenstein, first off, it's the only game called Wolfenstein in the whole series. Like, there's Wolfenstein 3D, but it's the only game that's literally called just Wolfenstein. Uh, it was made by Ravensoft, which is probably one of my favorite developers. They made, like, you know, Jedi Outcast, the <coughs> Star Wars game. They made Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, which is one of my favorite first-person shooters. Which I want to stream with you one day. Next to Deus Ex, of course. Uh, Soldier of Fortune, where you can blow the character's arms off and stuff. Hexen, oh, that's cool. you know, like, yeah. the mod, like which is like a Doom clone. Um, yeah, they're pretty good, and now they are forced to only make Call of Duty games and stuff like that, which sucks, but, um, yeah, they made this game, and I, I really liked it, because I, I was really big on their BBS back in 2001, right. um, Wait, they had, like, a corporate BBS that you could connect to? And yeah, like... they had that stuff, and they also had, like, forms and stuff like uh, that, that's crazy. so I, I was a big member of that for many years, but, uh, then you get to my favorite, which is the New Order, you know, five years later, 2014. 2014 was a great year for action and games like that because like Mad Max Fury Road came out. It was just a really strong 
you know, five years from dread onward of just really good uh, action movies and action games. I think that the New Order really represents a change in philosophy. Like all of the Wolfensteins prior to this were okay video game releases. They weren't the game of the year, but they were pretty good, pretty cool. With the New Order, you really see them going for this cinematic release it's like almost like a film reveal like yeah. the the trailer and the story and oh all the God, things the matter trailers are so good amazing yeah like there's the nazis taking over and them on the moon and the music like the house of the rising sun that is about berlin and all this other shit it's like it really sets the tone where the other games didn't really do that like it's software stuff giving a shit about wolfenstein after 3d and they kept letting other people do it or they make a funny phone game or whatever but machine games a swedish company i believe like kind of brought it back with Bethesda, so. Like somebody cared again. Yeah. I, I, I love it because like Wolfenstein has become this like first tier property. Like it's even probably in the modern mind, it's probably even bigger than Doom is because it doesn't have that like yeah. multiplayer well, legacy. For a that... long time the franchise died, but I think um, there was movies in like in the late 90s like Saving Private Ryan and that kind of stuff. And then um, well, it, it's, I, yeah. it's a series that could have just completely died off, but you know, they brought it back you know, so many years later with, with this one. And it's just, it's amazing that this franchise is still going to this day. And it's had a couple games this year yeah. or in the last two years. Yeah. Well, the, the new order really set the tone and made me go like, wow, Doom 2016 is going to be amazing. Yeah. Because look at what they did. Like how, I was like, how can they trump Wolfenstein, uh, the, the new order with Doom 2016, which they kind of did. It was a way more brutal game. But, but if you don't have Wolfenstein New Order doing the Wolfenstein style of what these games are, you don't have Doom in 2016 yeah. doing the Doom style of what these, mm -hmm. these games should be. I will say Doom 2016 really feels like the old one that's brutal. You're, going, you're, you're moving, you're jumping, you're, you're going, well, not jumping, but you know, you're going through enemies and you're getting to the end of the levels and things like what you're supposed to do. Um, whereas Wolfenstein, uh, the New Order, really feels like almost like a reboot not only of Castle um, Wolfenstein, the original game, because there is a lot more stealth segments. It is more about doing this, but they have all the brutality of Wolfenstein 3D and Return to Castle Wolfenstein and that new Doom. That that's why I just love it. It just it just hits you so hard. And they give B.J. Blaskowitz like just this amazing character and voice acting and all that kind of stuff. Would you say I have a question for you? Yeah. Would you say that out of like the crown jewels of the Bethesda Empire, whether it's like Fallout or Skyrim, mm -hmm. would you say that Wolfenstein is your favorite? It's between Wolfenstein and and, and Doom, but probably Wolfenstein more, just because I love alternative history, sci-fi. Anything about killing Nazis, that's all good shit. Um, yeah. It's the only game on, on Steam I've completed 100%. All achievements, everything. Wow. Only time I've ever set time to do that. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't think really I've cool. ever done that for any Steam game. Yeah. I, I, and I think like, like there's been a lot of attempts in recent years to do this like alternate Nazi yeah. history. Like We were watching The Man in the High Castle and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think this one managed to make it fun without well they made it a classic shooter yeah. the, your health doesn't recharge except for like maybe five percent or something like that you have to get armor pickups unlike doom 2000 or sorry uh wolf's 2009 that started doing recharging shit like halo and all that kind right. of crap or call of duty you, you know you, you have, if you die you can like get back up and shit like that like i never liked how, where call of duty went after two but yeah and, and these are hard hard d gameplay design decisions to like all the shooters were going this way they were going to that Halo model, and they're like, you know, we're gonna do this different. We're gonna spend a lot of money on all this cinematic oh. stuff. And then they said, no multiplayer. Fuck you. Yeah. There's no multiplayer in the new order. They're like, well, that, that's kind of that's kind of a setback, cause I mean, it's it's so good, you know. Oh, that no, thank God they did, because like like, cause then they wouldn't have worked so hard on it. Where you get something like uh, Mass Effect Three or Andromeda or whatever, where they spend so much time worried about the multiplayer and microtransactions and stuff suffers. that the rest of the game suffers right. immensely. Well, the thing, well, the thing is, well, Mike, like you don't like New Order. You you don't like the stealth. You don't like really a lot of the gameplay. Well, I like stealth in certain games. Yeah. Um, I was just playing through Sekiro, it has a lot of stealth, I was playing through whatever, a lot of different games I've done that I, that I enjoy stealth, but I guess it depends on how stealth is done. The first, um, well you're talking about New Order right now, yeah. I, I was thinking more about the uh, old, old Blood game. But, yeah, um, the Old Blood which is a, and it's a soft reboot of Return of the Castle Wolfenstein that has the zombies. It, it wasn't there. so much with, uh, with New Order, the uh, stealth part as much, it was more so the... Um, 
I, I like I said earlier, I'm more a guy who just likes to jump into the gameplay and go. It was more yeah. there's a that th- this is that's the game. New Order is the one that that's like this is our opportunity to really flesh out this character and give him a really good backstory and really go hard on that. And that's great for the people who want that, but I'm not that so, guy. So I'm gonna ask you, why, why did you have trouble getting invested in the story? Because you, there's so many movies you like that are way slower than movies that I would prefer, for instance. Typically when I play video games, I'm looking more for the action. Yeah. Uh, usually. Um, I mean, even Legend of Zelda, which I love. I don't. I'm there for the puzzles and the and the action and the playing the game more so than I'm for like. I don't really give a shit what Princess Zelda's doing in their right. castle or whatever the fuck. I don't care. I just want to do the things in order to save her. I've always been like that. That's really interesting. Would you watch a like if if they came out with a Wolfenstein movie? Oh, uh, which we're gonna talk about later. Right. I, would, I would just go see a Wolfenstein. You movie. would just see the movie, and then but then, I'm, then you'd I'm, have the separation that you want. Yeah, I've I've always been that way. It's like yeah. I I would like to see a, a, a Wolfenstein movie. It could be really interesting because then I'm set up to watch a movie. Like I I don't know. I, I like I, I like how you can't have exposition in your games. Yeah. None. It's like it's like it's like, it's like when you when you eat your dinner. Like you have to have like the the like the vegetables separate from the potato no, it's not that separate. I can't have it it's that a, a lot it's that most of the time I'm not in the mood for it sometimes I am but it's rare I, what I would like is if every video game had the option in the beginning where it's like like story, story or off. story or game and then it's like if I happen to be in the mood or like let's say this let's say it's like one of my favorite games of all time and I played through it a few times and I'm like eh, I'm going to turn the story on this time and now I'm going to go through it or for the people who like like yourself yeah. or most people that well, my my opinion here is an unpopular opinion but I know that I'm not alone in this cuz I have a lot of yeah. people in my in streams and whatnot that feel the same way so um you know what I, you know what I feel like I think there should be the option to turn it on and off you know I'm kind of in the middle with this because I feel like a lot of times developers will present you with a large amount of story before they've, in my opinion, earned the right to. Yes. Like, I feel like, okay, if I, if I go through, the like for instance, you're playing Final Fantasy VI, which is a story rich game. Mm-hmm. But they- and I love that game. They, you know, the, the, the ice field part is whatever, but they start you with a little bit of combat. Mm-hmm. They start you, you, you contextualize the characters through the combat. Final Fantasy IV, you contextualize the characters through the combat. So they kind of earn it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And those are story, story heavy games. Mm-hmm. If your game is a shooter, I don't want to know the story until an hour yeah, in. Yeah, like you start with like a two hour movie, pretty much. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. It's rough. So, so it's rough. And also on top of that, you know, um, coming off of, you know, being a teenager and playing, you know, this to begin with, this is the, st- this is the standard I know. Yeah. Then I play Doom also by id, so it's kind of related. It's like also the standard I know, start the game immediately. Even, this isn't just me and I'll, t- I'll tell you what, there was a game that came out a year or two ago called Mini Doom 2. Yeah. And that game makes a, almost a joke out of it. It's, I forget exactly what it says, maybe we can get a clip of it, but it says in the beginning, it's like, like kind of like fuck you go and you're just going and you're playing the game. And there is sort of, I think, there, I think there's a little bit of a, a, a divide. Like to, to go back on the subject of fucking Wolfenstein New Order. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, man. You go to the moon, which yeah. is fun. They have all like the laser weapons and the craft work and all this stuff going on. Well, like, well, let me tell you this, though. That's another thing that really bothers me is that they'll, they'll throw out, you know, all these like story sequences. And then I play the game again and I'm like, oh, fuck, this is awesome right now. And then I'm playing it. And then I then I get detached and then I get right. angry because it's like I was playing uh, Old Blood yeah. and I loved it. When it started, I was like, oh shit, I really like this one. And then um, it starts you off and you're in this room and there's there's this uh, balcony above you kind of thing. And there's all these guys shooting down. They're coming down on wires. It's like SWAT teams attacking you or whatever it is. And I was like, this, this game is fucking awesome. And I was like, not expecting to like that game. And then in the sequence after that, it goes, you know, goes into chapter one or whatever after that. And then now the game has turned into you're crawling around, you have no weapons, yeah. you're a prisoner, which, you know, which is like fine. like the original game. Yeah, but the original game doesn't have you, um, you know, flipping switches and then you're getting electrocuted and then 14 guys are shooting at you. Yeah. I just want the game, I will I want that part of the fucking game where you're like, it's just Wolfenstein, well, not this other shit. Because now they turned Wolfenstein 
into another game. That's a different game. So, like, Old Blood, Old Blood kind of starts with you, like, earning that. Like, they give you weapons and you do stuff, and then they take it all away and you have to earn it all back. So it's every Spider-Man comic every night. I guess made. so, yeah. yeah. Like, I just played them all recently, and I played Old Blood and then New Order rather than playing them in release order. Mm -hmm. And I just got a chance to play um, New Colossus, which I never beat when it came out. I never played that one. Yeah, and a lot of people didn't like it because there were like all these like issues and SJW stuff that was in there and stuff that people didn't really like. But I didn't really see too much of that. I thought it was a fine game because it takes place in like the early like like mid '60s, so it's all about like civil rights and getting America back on track. And it's it's called New Colossus because that's the poem on the um, now you, New Order. Game. That was the one that, that's like 1942. I'm, I might be getting the games New confused. New Order starts in '46, and you wake up in 1960. By the end of that. Yeah, and then at the end of that, it ends on a cliffhanger, and BJ's pretty much like, you think he's dead, or you don't know, they're, they're gonna nuke fucking Death's Head compound, and now it starts five months later, and you wake up from a coma, again, big thing that happens in this series, mm -hmm. and it's five months later, it's 1961, and it's you starting the rebellion um, to, like, finally crush the Nazis or whatever, and get back at everyone who, okay. whatever. And, and instead of going to the moon in that one, you go to Venus, where you meet Hitler, he pees in a bucket, it's a lot of fun. But it, it's definitely more cinematic than the other one, so you probably like it even less. Yeah. But there's so many amazing things. Like, there's a point in the game where you get to pick, like, different weapons. You want, like, stronger weapons or things you can run through opponents or giant stilts. You can do, like, super jumps and right. get to areas no one else can get to. And you get, you know, there's a part where you're, hit, you, spoiler alert, you get fucking decapitated. Right. And that happens, like, like you see it happen. Like, there's cool parts. There was shit in New Order that I, that I really liked. I remember um, there's, like, this giant, like, fucking, like, robot, like, standing outside that you have, they, they have to take out. And you take off these, I don't even know, like, Gatling guns. And then you, like, pull them off. And then you can go around, like, yeah. shoot shit. But then you got to, like, put them back to, like, you get your stuff back. I, I, like, I like some of the mechanics. And... Yeah, because it's very open on how you can accomplish a task. Mm -hmm. Or you can be more stealth-like and then get people, or you can just go in guns blazing and let the alarms go off. Or like Doom, um, two thousand, uh, sorry, Doom twenty sixteen. You know, how, like when you get an enemy down, you can like do like a quick kill maneuver that does like a cinematic kill real quick. There's a lot of that in Wolfenstein: The New Order series, where you like pop off something off their back and stab. I'm talking them about like the melee attacks. Yeah. yeah, but like you can incorporate them with like not like quick time events, but you know, mm -hmm. trigger at the right time. And then Young Bloods came out where you play as his daughters. Um, Sarah and Zofia. I am sorry. I could not play. We're talking about Youngblood right now. It's right? not that. Good. I could not play that game for more than ten minutes because you couldn't handle the back and forth banter between oh, them. It's like just like fucking, but, 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 like fucking Beavis and Butthead, man. Yeah. I don't like them at all. And it, it, I'm not, you know, I guess spoiler alert for that one. Yeah. It ends because Hitler, uh, BJ kills Hitler in that universe, but it, you, you don't see it happen. Yeah. And when Hitler dies, he has like a doomsday device tied to him or something like that. And pretty much all the weather on Earth is getting like destroyed. So he, like when Hitler dies, the whole planet dies. So now all the Nazis have to make like Iron Sky craft to live in the clouds. And they're already doing that on Venus. It's like weird. And then you find out there's also other dimensions using the technology that they stole from the Jews. It's a whole fucking It was thing. so it was so different that it was like it was just that's an example i just thought it was too different it just didn't seem like a wolfenstein game at that point point. and then i put on old blood and i was like oh this is wolfenstein now so, yeah young yeah. blood got away from it and then they called it young blood to compete with old blood i guess the name wise and it's like the kids and bj's too old now, now there's also a virtual reality one isn't there cyber pilot so, do you, have you played that no but you play as a french resistance guy because at this point like the world's kind of destabilizing and you're taking over all the machines because they got to keep you in a chair and you're just shooting stuff yeah. it's not that good it's okay yeah. it's not as good as like super hot vr or something the, like that. i love super hot vr but i, I don't know like because that game takes place in 79 or 80 so, so this is pretty much like the 80s so all the like everything's more amped up people have like audio cassettes and the Beatles in that world are more like new wave and all the little things like that so the next step is to do like a 90s game but yeah I, but I where do you go from there like the world is so different they, they're gonna do, they, they, they would have to do other dimensions and do that stuff but uh, but I don't like Youngbloods being connected to the series anymore because it's not that like New Colossus I get there's a lot of cool moments that happen in that regardless of like the fucking social messaging and people hating it but I thought it was fine so should we talk about unless you have anything else um, where the series you think should go next yeah i mean i think what they need to do is maybe update um make like a 4k re-release of them and kind of fix a lot of the stuff there's a lot of issues with facial animations and bugs and things like that like maybe like a pack of that series of the new ones together might be nice okay. that'd be cool yeah I mean, just I wait, just repackaging those games and putting them back out you're saying 
Yeah, because there, there's still some issues with them. Um, and I, I think they could like kind of hone them up a little bit. So a remastered of the current game. Yeah, and you could also probably put some more work in the fucking young blood and make it good. But I think you know, you know, based on the current storyline of the game, they've kind of painted themselves into a corner. And I really don't see what going to the '90s or 2000s buys us. There's really nowhere to go. Like they've kind of reached the end of history, so to speak. Yeah. You know, there's no communism. There's no. Yeah. There's. Like what's gonna happen? So I think that's what's probably gonna happen is they're gonna reboot it again. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, I mean, in my opinion, what I'd like to see happen is maybe give it five, four or five years when the PS5 or something comes out, yeah. put out a new one several se several years into the lifespan, spend some time on it, make it good, reboot the franchise. And I don't think I like I don't want to see it in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s. I, I want to see it in the 40s. Let's bring it back to the 1940s. Let's go back to basics to an extent. But let's just... I mean, did you like all the concept of the Nazis have super technology that yes. they've gotten a hold of? Yeah, very much. Either from... Well, the, origin the early games had that too. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you're not seeing, like, you know, actual Nazis in the 1940s that were going around in giant well, mechs. They, they, you know? they explain in the new one where they saw, like, the dot you shot or whatever, like the, like, the old Hebrew technology. Like, there was, like, super scientists on Earth, like, 2,000 years ago that were, like, making stuff but hiding it mm -hmm. kind of thing. And they find all the bunkers. Like, Roswell, New Mexico is one of the bunkers, and that's how they find it. And they get anti-gravity technology yeah. and stuff like that. I think all that's great. I just don't want it to move too far away from, like, I, I feel like it's a World War II era thing and when they move too far away from that it's it just gets to be too far away from what it should be yeah. for me at least i think by adding dimension jumping they could go like okay now we're going back to 40s because they're trying to undo the all the stuff that's happening kind of like back to the future too so that's it? like the soft reboot kind of like no it's the it's the star trek 2009 plan right where you're gonna <laughs> yeah we're, we're gonna undo the past that's what's gonna happen um i think what you said earlier like they should just go and make a movie Unlike yeah. Doom 2005, which I don't mind, yeah. but um, a Wolfenstein movie would be good. And they tried making one in the early 2000s with one of the guys from True Romance and Resident Evil and Silent Hill, like those guys who made those movies. Um, and I guess it kind of failed, but I think you could do it nowadays pretty good with the plot of maybe like one's that and two's the new Colossus, but you had a little finality to them. I don't know who would play B.J. Blaskowitz. This, this is a whack idea, but we, we've now seen a platformer version of uh, Doom with mini Doom 2. How about a platformer like Wolfenstein game or a oh, totally... Take it the other way. Yeah. Take it the other That's way. That's interesting. Like a, like a yeah, side totally story limited. Yeah. Like, how, did you ever play in um, the New Order how you can play in the old Wolfenstein 3D levels but with all your weapons in the, in the new game? It didn't get to it. Oh, you uh, just blow people. Yeah, they're like little secrets. Yeah. That's kind of how the secrets in that game work. I really enjoyed those, those segments in Doom where you could find this hidden areas yeah. and things. I did a little bit of that with Tony. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, um, but last year a movie called Overlord came out and it's basically if Wolfenstein was a movie without I saying Wolfenstein. I never watched that. I wanted to yeah. see that. I, I heard it was good. It. Since Doom and Wolfenstein kind of go together, I did want to mention, not that's a little off topic, but the 2016 Doom, um, I finally got a chance to play it more. I've been streaming it and I actually really like that. Oh, dude, I'm so excited they pushed back Eternal because that's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mark my words. Wait, yeah. So the Doom 2016, there is a more of an example of, um, I think, they did a for me more right with that because you're just that, that's it's, it's much more just action. It does end on on a cliffhanger and, and there is a, there is some exposition, but it's not as much as Wolfenstein. But the really exposition it. really doesn't hit you until you're already in that facility. Like you don't hear about like the spider lady or any of the things yeah, until you you're just, like you way wake, you wake up and they're like kill stuff. You'll figure it out later. Yeah, right. yeah. And you don't figure it like there's three, four, five levels before you actually start figuring anything out. I, I think uh, if we're going to do gritty reboots and stuff like that of id software games, I'm thinking Commander Keen should be next. The uh, great, 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 great grandson of BJ Black. Well, they got sick of Commander Keen, the original team. I think they had made like seven of them or whatever, yeah. and they're like, God, they're like, no more Commander Keen. Well, like, just, just, just the mobile game, whatever the fuck's coming out? Yeah. Are they really thinking well, it Well, technically, isn't Commander Keen in the same universe yes. as Wolfenstein? Well, technically, um, BJ Blaskowitz is like. Like great, great, whatever in Doom as well as soldiers because of fucking Doom Three. But yeah, oh, right. in, in Doom um, Annihilation, the fucking straight the DVD movie that just came out, they talk about they're like, oh, it's Cap Captain Blaskowitz died here or whatever. You're like, ah, that movie sucks. Yeah. Make Commander Keen the villain in the next game or something. Yeah. I don't know. I, I played Commander Keen for the first time when I got the Gravis gamepad for my computer and it came with Goodbye Galaxy. So I love that game.
Yeah, I think it's a great series. I think you should check out all the games of all the eras. The yeah. new ones are cool. The old ones are cool. And at least they're franchises that are still rebooted and cool. Like I love like Prey 2006 is one of my favorite first person shooters. And then Arcane Studios, who I think worked on Youngblood, uh, did it in 2017 and fucking ruined the franchise. So well, because they backed away from the core story, but that's a story for another day. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Pray for another day, gentlemen.